Hello everyone. It's been a long time since I've done one of these videos, but I figured I might as well try to get back into it. So the goal for today is going to be to make a Tetris grid class that will handle all of the basic grid operations. I'm not sure how far into that we're actually going to get, but we should get a basic layout for it. So just to start out, it's been a long time since I've looked at this code, but I just want to get rid of some of these warnings that are up here. So we've got some unused imports, and if you're using Eclipse, just Control shift o Auto-Import, that will take care of those. And we also have a similar issue in our config.java, so just take care of that with Control shift o again. And then we've got this thing right here, where uh, we don't have a serial version UID, so and just add a default one just to make it go away. We don't need that Java doc stuff. And then we go into the config file and find our last warning. And that's going to be that our scanner is never closed. And that's something that I should have never had happen in the first place, but might as well take care of it now. So just at the bottom of our load config file, we're going to want to just do s.close. And that's going to make these upset, so we'll just copy this to all of those places. And now it should be done. Actually, now that I think about it, we don't really need the scanner at any point after this. So we can actually close the scanner right here and remove all of these lines. All right, now that that's done, let's get into our Tetris grid class. So to do that, we're just going to make a new Java class, name it Tetris grid, finish. And we're going to need some width by some height. So we can just define those as variables. And then in our constructor for that, we're going to want to pass those in. So it's just a generic constructor, nothing too complicated going on here. Now for this grid we're going to want to initialize an array of integers that is going to represent our grid, our Tetris grid, so that we know where pieces are and aren't. And the easiest way to do this is probably going to be as a 2D array, so we're going to start with that for now. And just work with that. So we're going to initialize that based off, off of our width and height. And we're going to go row and then column. So the this first position here, whenever we access anything in the grid, that's going to say what row it's on. So if we're so like grid zero, that's that we're on row zero, and then the next one's going to be the column. So this is going to be column one. So we want to make this grid width by height. So to start off, we're going to say grid is new int height. And then we want to initialize all of these values to negative 1. And the reason I say negative 1 is because we're going to use negative 1 to mean a grid is not occupied, while a value of 0 through whatever our Tetris color size is, based on this image. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 0 through 6 will represent colors of Tetris blocks for the grid to draw. And then negative 1 will mean the space is empty. So this is just a simple for loop. So 
So now the whole grid will be initialized to negative. Now the next thing for our grid is we want to obviously be able to draw anything that happens to be in it. And as we have set up before, our drawing is done by passing around this graphics 2D object. So let's get that going. Public void draw grid. And we're going to need the graphics 2D object here. And that's going to require an import, so Control Shift O takes care of that. And now we simply want to loop through our grid and draw pieces where they should be. You can use X or I. I'm going to use X just for consistency. But a uh, common standard is to also just use uh, I and J for these. So rather, instead of saying int x, we would say int i and int j, and that's just, it's a standard that comes down to a personal preference. But because I already used x, I'm going to continue to use x. So, um, we didn't specify like a grid size or anything. Okay. So, let me just run what we have now. So we don't have any, any idea of a grid. And that's going to be a problem, because obviously we want this to tile one after the other. It's so like we want this block here, and then we'd want a block to be 25 after it. So like, like that. We don't want them to overlap on top of each other. So our grid needs some idea of a square size, which we can just make a constant. And then, um, that's fine, whatever. We can just not have it be a const. I don't exactly remember how Java constants work. I will fix that in a future tutorial if I remember or two. If not, it doesn't really matter. Regardless, we're going to use this square size to draw our grid. And also, our Tetris grid probably needs to know about these Tetris blocks so that it knows what it's drawing. So, Let's just pass those in with the initialization of it so that it grabs those blocks. And then just for standards, we can make all of these private. So yeah, let's just pass these in with the constructor, so that they have to come with the initialization. So now in here, we want to check for that grid spot being zero, or negative one, because negative one means nothing. We should make that a comment here, because it will be easier to keep up with. So if this grid spot is empty, actually if it's not empty, then we want to draw something there. And this can just be essentially the same code as we used in our original render function just to draw these, um, oh, that's fine just to draw these blocks. We can just use the same draw image technique and I'll comment out this update print because we don't need it right now and it just spams the output. So G, actually, let's just go ahead and copy this. 
and this will have to be the grid. So the grid will say whatever number is in there. And now we need these positions, which are going to be based on the x and y position. And then just as a test, we can, in this initialization, we'll just set a couple of the squares to something else. So let's just say 0, 0 is 0, grid 1, 0 is 2, grid 1, 1 is 3, and 0, 1 is 1. So this is just for testing purposes because we don't have any way to put things into this grid yet. And that will come in a future tutorial. But for now, just for testing for this grid class, let's try this. So now we go back to our Tetris main. And we're going to want a Tetris grid to play through the whole game. So let's make one of those. And then we need to create one. Best place to do that would be in our initialize function after we have already loaded all of our blocks. So right here, we'll just create our Tetris grid. And we need to put in the width the height and the images. So the images are easy. That's just Tetris blocks. And then the width and height are actually going to be the width and height of our canvas, except we need... Actually, no. Okay. This, this, should, this will be the right, right way to do this. So these are not divided by our scale yet, which is our square size. But that's OK. We can take care of that right here. Divided by square size. And then we want to make sure that these use our classes version of width and height, because they will not be the same. So now that we have a grid, and we've created our grid object in our initialize function, whenever we render, we want to draw that grid. So we no, no, long, no longer need to do these. And instead, we can say g.draw, no, that's wrong, Tetris grid dot draw grid, and then just pass it our graphics. So now let's run that. And that's a good start. So we've got clearly something going on here. All right, these also need to be this dot width and this dot height. All right, let's try that again. So now you see we've got our four little blocks up in the corner. Now, you may notice this creates a little problem because the grid just starts at the top up here. There's not really a um, room for things like our title or whatever. So this is something that we can fix with some x and y offsets. So let's just add those also to our constructor. Um, int width off, int height off. And for now, let's just shorten these to w off and h off. And let's also keep track of these as a class variable. And just set them.
So this is basically going to tell our grid how far from the point. Oh, let's just put in some values here so we can run this. So Java starts drawing everything at this point up here where it considers to be 0, 0. So all this is going to do is say, how far from 0, 0 do you want our grid to start? And to do that, we will just include those in our drawing. And then in our initialization of the grid, because we don't want it to go off the screen, we will also take that much off of the width and height. So subtracting the height offset from the height will leave us with the remaining height on the screen. So let me just put 100 in here as an example. So now you see we have a height offset of 100. This is 100 pixels. And our grid is limited to this size because the height we're using to calculate the height of the grid has had the height offset subtracted from it. But obviously 100 is probably a bit extreme and we could probably move this title up a little bit too. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll put the title at 25 instead, and then we'll do a height offset of 50. So yeah, that's, that's probably pretty good. I mean, you can just fiddle around with these values until it gets something that you like. And I'm actually going to call it for this video here. So in the next video, we will go over a method to check if a row in the grid is full. And probably something that would be useful is a way to insert blocks into the grid. So I haven't fully planned it out yet, but we'll get along to that in the next episode. So um, this is obviously my first video in a long time. If you want me to continue producing this content, anything, appreciate a like, a comment, you know, whatever. And if you want to keep up with this, I'm going to try to. So feel free to subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.